Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. This is a story of how to save you. In this episode, we'll be playing Across the Obelisk, the RPG co-op roguelike deck building game where you and up to three friends will attempt to reach the obelisk while battling through a wide variety of enemies in order to grow more and more powerful. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Across the Obelisk is currently in full release and available on PC for $20. So what exactly is the game? Well, Across the Obelisk is first and foremost a roguelike deck building game. Therefore, let's start by talking about the deck building elements that are brought to the table. In Across the Obelisk, each character will start out every run with a basic deck of 15 cards. As you play the game more though, you will be able to unlock new cards, equipment, pets, and heroes. In total, there are 500 different cards and 16 different heroes just to give you an idea as to how much content there is to unlock and experience within the game. To get many of these cards, pets, and heroes, however, you will need to complete some quests. Quests will come in the form of standard and random events on the in-game map. When you choose to take a path, you could choose to go toward a more obvious quest, such as a character unlock. Then, once you arrive at a quest location, you will be given an option to do something such as help them, fight them, or even attempt to do something else. Assuming you make the right decision, you'll then receive a quest to reach another specific spot on the map. At that point, you may have to fight some kind of mini-boss or do something else in order to complete that quest and unlock the character. Pet unlocks will work in a very similar way to this, but cards are going to be a bit different. This is because card unlocks are primarily done through completing combat or corruption fights. You see, each time you complete a combat with your party, you will be rewarded with a set number of cards of which you can add one of to your deck. All of them are thankfully unlocked for you even if you don't choose to add them to your deck at that specific moment. But the cards you have to choose between can be increased in rarity based on how fast you were able to clear the fight before you actually got to the rewards. Higher tier cards are obviously going to be rarer to see. But once you have unlocked them, you'll be able to purchase them whenever you are in a town during a future run. Now, towns and across the obelisk are places at the start of each map that will have shops for you to purchase new cards to add to your deck, equipment to equip to your character, and much more. For an example, you have a couple stores that are specifically devoted to allowing you to purchase and upgrade cards with crystals that can be obtained in your current or past runs, but you also have stores that allow you to remove cards as well. This is important since you want to have the most optimal deck you possibly can, which means getting rid of your less powerful cards will allow you to redraw the more powerful ones faster. Another reason the store is so important is because it allows you to remove negative effect cards such as Itchy Burn. Negative effect cards are cards that will cause you to take a negative effect whenever you draw them. This could be something like energy being taken away or a slow being applied to your character so that they will go later in the turn order. These cards are usually obtained either through death or failing an ability check, like a check not to fall down a pit and have everyone break their leg. To do these checks, usually you will have to have all characters in your party draw a card and have it be less than or more than a specific number in order to succeed and not get the negative effect effect or get some kind of bonus. If you do succeed though, you will be given EXP which can then be used to level up your characters for the duration of that run. Each level will then give that character some kind of a benefit such as a really powerful card or just increased damage. Now before we move into the pros and cons, we would like to mention that if you hit the join button just below this video, you can get some cool perks for less than the price of a cheeseburger at your favorite fast food restaurant. In all seriousness though, any support makes a huge difference in the time and quality that we're able to put in each of our videos, and once again, to do this, just check out the join button down below. With that being said, first up for the pros is that the game's combat is top notch and really requires you to think about every single one of your turns. Every character has a specific role to play, and each zone presents different monsters to fight, which provides a unique challenge for each run. There are even builds that play off each other, such as healers that heal based on shields and tanks that apply a lot of them. No matter what build you choose though, there will always be enemies that can counter it. Next up for the pros is the difficulty options. Across the Obelisk has madness levels similar to torment levels in Diablo. You are able to increase the difficulty in each run for extra rewards at the end. However, the monsters may gain new abilities and increase strength, providing even more of a challenge as you go up in madness levels. 
After that is the fact that the game has an absolute ton of replayability value. Each time you play the game for the first 24 to 40 hours, you will most likely be unlocking or trying to unlock new things, and even after you have unlocked everything, there is also the madness difficulties that make the game significantly harder, adding even more reasons for you to keep playing. And lastly for the pros are the different game modes. There are two additional game modes that add so much value to the game in the form of true randomness and a competitive atmosphere. In both of the two extra game modes, you will have everything unlocked and everything will be randomized. One of these modes has a specific randomization that is the same for every player that changes each week so that you can compete for high scores. Now for the cons. The first con I have for you today is that the game can start to feel a bit grindy, especially early on. And this is only because there is a lot of things to unlock and you have to go through multiple runs in order to get it all, even if you're already beating the game. At the end of the day, since this is a roguelike and that does mean that you should be playing through the same map multiple times, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but some people will find this grind to be a bit tedious, although some may not. And the last con I have for you guys today is just that the game's animations seem to be a bit rough around the edges. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean they're particularly bad, just that they're very repetitive. To give you an example, whenever you cast a spell as a hero, most of the time you'll only have one or two different animations your character will use to cast that spell, be it defensive or offensive or whatever that might be. This same rule applies for enemies, such as the tree boss, which just keeps opening his mouth every time he wants to cast something. I think these animations could definitely be improved, but at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal, it's just something that we noticed that was a bit of a pet peeve. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that the game costs. So for this game in particular, in Across the Obelisk, we would want to get roughly 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 cost of the game. And after putting over 24 played hours into this game, we give it. Nine out of 10 potatoes. Across the Obelisk was the most fun we have had in a co-op game setting in a very long time. There's so much to learn, so many strategies to play, and so many challenges to overcome that the game always gives you some sense of accomplishment every time something is unlocked or you beat a certain difficulty. The game does have somewhat lackluster animations, and some friends might argue over what's the best play to make rather than just have fun with the game, but at the end of the day, this game has brought us so much fun that we feel across the obelisk is without a doubt worth the cost. Now before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more survival game content and reviews. We just want to quickly shout out our Platinum and Above members Jonathan S, Caustic FPV, and Jim Phillips, and if you too would like to help support the channel for less than a dollar, which is less than the price of a cheeseburger these days, you can hit the join button down below to check out our membership program. Otherwise, thank you so much again for watching, and we'll see you next time.